A toast to Mulder and Scully. Getting it on. Episode three, another episode written by Chris Carter. The episode opens with a party scene that apparently is playing a punk rock version of one of David's songs. Congrats, David, your song got on TV. The guy sees his doppelganger. People keep seeing their doppelgangers right before they die. Only this guy doesn't die. He lives long enough to tell everybody that he saw his other self. That's convenient. Fine. First quick observations. One, they're in Henrico County. This is only important because I am from Henrico County. Live there. Not now. I live in New York now. The X-Files are always filming in Virginia. It's not Virginia. It's Vancouver. I know. I'm just saying it upsets me because I'd like them to actually be there. But whatever. Second observation. Arky. At first I thought I was losing my mind and hearing it wrong, but no. Third observation, Jillian's wig is just so beautiful. Every scene, just like looking fabulous. Part of me dies inside because she's so beautiful, but also just because it's gonna go one day. Don't take the wig away, I love the wig. And then when she's walking down the hallway, her waist is just so tiny. Jillian in general is just very tiny. Her waist, oh just a lot of beautiful scully in this episode okay okay i was drinking whiskey during the episode i was having a hard enough time getting through that then Mulder and scully are introduced to judy off the bat is like flirting with Mulder, and scully does this cute thing where she just like looks at him and then Mulder says this is dana my name is fox and this is dana any episode in which Mulder calls scully dana automatically gets points dana also, she calls herself Little Judy at one point. You can call me Little Judy. I wrote all caps, Little Judy, what the fuck? <laughs> then Mulder and Scully arrive at a hotel. Chris Carter, I know that you are reading fan fiction at this point. This is a thing that only happens in fan fiction. We arrived at a hotel off in the middle of nowhere. No rooms available, just one suite. Oh, we have to share a bed. Scully's not into it. Mulder's like eyeing her up and they're like being cute. I wouldn't normally give props to Chris Carter. I'm still not quite going to. Whoever slipped him some fanfic and disguised it as something else, you did the right thing. And then Scully's in bed and she looks so beautiful. I'm literally just gonna keep talking about how beautiful Scully looks. I'm sorry if you were expecting something else. Mulder is behind her. She startles away. And just does like the little eyebrow thing. Are you guys living together? In the last episode, there was the whole our home moment, chilling on the couch, watching TV. Is all of that just supposed to have not happened? What? You guys live together or not? This whole like separate rooms thing is like really confusing actually. But anyway, Mulder wakes Scully up and they have to go see Arky because he's hung himself. While they're checking out his suicide murder, they both look really good. Mulder's rocking that jacket and that shirt and wondering where the sex scene is. Uh, I've seen you both go to sleep in that fucking hotel room. So I'm just wondering when it's going to happen. Then Mulder goes off alone to go interview Chuck. This guy says, are you tapping that tasty little redhead? No. I mean, yes, but no. Like, I couldn't even listen to the rest of the scene after that tasty little redhead was just said. That tasty little redhead. You tapping that special agent? <laughs> Rolling in my mind. We see the hangman and we see all these other things that are apparently important, pushing the connection between Chuck and Judy. I'm just like, tasty little redhead. My notes just continue to say, Dana looks amazing. Oh my god. So I think we know what I got out of this episode. I think that this is about the scene where she's walking down the hallway in that skirt. Scully goes back to interview Judy, get to the bottom of this nonsense. She's like lost her mind, psychotic. She starts yelling at Scully and flinging shit at her. But then this bitch has the gall to tell her that she's past her child bearing years. Bitch, you don't know anything about Dana Scully. You're just rude. There's a lot of history with Scully and her ability to bear children. <clears throat> Little Judy, go fuck yourself. Then my honey's looking in the mirror and she's so sad because she's thinking about it. <sighs> and then Moeller comes in. And first of all, they have connecting rooms at this point. Connecting rooms. Thick. And he's got some uh, buttons undone. I see what you came here to do. Okay. Just saying. Now would be a good time for sex. And then they have a heart to heart moment and Scully asks him if he thinks she's getting old and I'm just like, oh my God. He sits on the bed and he says, you still got it going on. Who wrote this fanfic? Chris Carter, it couldn't have been you. 
I just don't buy it. And then she like pushes them out of the bed and they're like smiling at each other and I'm just like, you could have had sex already and it could have been fine. Then Mulder goes back to Chuck's house and Scully goes back to Judy and Judy gives her these fucking bread pills and the nurses are like, we take the bread pills. Like they might have powers. You're a nurse and you're taking her bread pills? Gross, probably not hygienic. Another note says, I can't get over the wig. When are they gonna bang? Meanwhile, Dean's out there losing his shit. He's got so many guns and so many swords. And I'm sort of just like, Chris Carter, who do you know that has a house with all of this sword space? Cause it seems like a really extra use for prop money. Like, do you just have a friend with a lot of swords and you were like, let me use your house? These are my questions. It's 8.40 and they still haven't had sex. Then we're back to the bed. We've been back to this bed like eight times already. But this time Mulder comes in wearing a tank top and I'm like, it's time. But nope, it's just a dead body. And then after checking out the decapitated head, Scully sees her double. No one's gonna be surprised by this. Scully's doppelganger is really hot. I know that she's the same as Scully, but she's a little bit hotter. She's just like staring like, and it's just kind of hot. Sue me. Then we're back to the bed and I'm like, how many times are we gonna get back to the bed before you two actually fuck? Scully keeps getting startled awake and she's so nervous that she goes to Mulder's room and then she says, can you hold me? Can you hold me? Newsflash, he can hold you. Can you hold me? I would love to thank the author that wrote this fic. I don't believe that his name is Chris Carter. <sighs> They're in the bed together. <laughs> They're in the bed together. And then Scully starts talking about retiring and what are they gonna do when they retire and what if Mulder finds someone else that he wants to have kids with that's younger. Bitch, do you have any idea that you are Dan and Catherine Scully, goddess divine? No, girl. You are it. Mulder's lucky that you put up with his ass all the goddamn time. You think that he could find anybody else to do that? No. She's talking about growing old together and spending their last years like together. And he's just like, I'll push my wheelchair with your wheelchair. Will you wife that woman already? And then he's asking her if she wants to have more kids. And I'm like, there's too much Scully kids pain happening. <sighs> And then they're talking about how they'll be around for each other. And she asks like, promise? And I'm like, I think you guys just got married in this bed for sure right now. It's what I call a wedding. And then she turns to him and smiles. It's the look. She gives him the look. Miles. Like kiss, kiss now. Of course the camera pans away to Scully's super hot doppelganger and this just reinforces that she's super hot is that she likes to watch. Just saying. Then Mulder gets up to go to the bathroom and sees his doppelganger and mostly all I can think about at this point is how they had sex and I didn't even get to see them kiss, but like whatever. We all know you don't have to kiss to have sex, but you know what? Kissing makes it better, Chris. Minus all the fan fiction, the fact that they didn't even get to kiss before you imply that they fucked. Of course we couldn't have like a nice lean in before the camera pans away. It's my one complaint. I get one. And then Mulder comes back in the room ranting about the doppelgangers and things and all I can think about is Scully is naked under that sheet. And you know, Mulder's freaking out. She's all, come back to bed. My mind's like spazzing out. Because Scully's naked and gets dressed, I assume, and then goes out to the car and then eats the bread pills. She eats them. Why does she eat them? Scully is a rational, sane person. Did they save her? Is that the reason Mulder and Scully both didn't die? It's not like Scully shoved some bread pills down Mulder's throat before he left. Was there a point other than my general amusement? And then Scully talking to her doppelganger in the mirror in the car is kind of hilarious because she's just like white knuckle in the wheel and she's like, I'm a sane person. I know you're not real. And I'm just like, your doppelganger's hot. Like, see where this could go. <laughs> I hate everything about myself. I can't believe I'm putting all this in here. These are unfiltered thoughts. Anyway, then Mulder's fighting himself. Wow, Mulder's like really fighting a lot of people this season. Meanwhile, Chuck and Judy are just trying to kill everybody, they're trying to kill Mulder and Scully, then they're trying to kill each other. So they both end up dead and Mulder and Scully end up alive. Yay! Then the episode closes. Mulder saying they should get a couple hours in before checkout time. Scully's all smiling. And you think that she's just gonna let him walk away, yelling at the screen like, no bitch, go in there after him. It's all like, it's not out of the realm of extreme possibilities. Opens the door and there he is. Like, ah. 
and then they cut to black. You bastards. Between this week and last week, there's been a lot of great, really flirty Mulder and Scully, and I'm just so so please, thank you, God. Yes to love, yes to life, yes to Mulder and Scully having sex. <sighs> I just really wish we could have had a kiss. I don't wanna bitch and complain because I am so grateful. A kiss would have been nice. That's all I'm saying. This is the X-Files fandom. We can't have everything. We can usually not have anything. So I'm just going to count my blessings and uh, say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Go check out last week's if you missed it or subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next week.